I think it's always, always very important to have that lawyer take a look at everything and guide the client and give some advice and recommendations and warnings. Very important information. Extremely important. In our very dynamic and constantly changing market, I have a lot of buyers that perhaps they're not pre-approved for the million dollar houses and they'll be able to shop anywhere. Their budget is a little bit lower. So what that means is we have to get really strategic and start thinking, considering and brainstorming what our options are. And sometimes it comes down to us thinking, okay, you need to get into the market. So you might have to buy somewhere where you're not interested in living. So we are juggling the concept of, is this going to be owner occupied or is this going to be an investment property? Are there any implications that might complicate a situation when it could be one or the other? Definitely, definitely. You know, it all depends on the individual circumstances of that person, of course, and whether they're willing to, for instance, uh, rent out that property and, and, you know, still keep the renting out their property, current property where they are residing Mm -hmm. and, you know, purchase that property for investment purposes so that, you know, pays for itself sort of, right. Covers the expenses. Um, But I would say for first time home buyers, this is important because when you are a first time home buyer and you purchase that property as an investment property, you are losing your um, eligibility to have that land transfer tax rebate to obtain that land transfer tax rebate. So this is an unfortunate um, outcome, right? Mm -hmm. You will not get that rebate. And I mean, if you're purchasing it in Toronto, the land transfer tax is double. So, you know, you would get a rebate as well uh, accordingly. But if you are purchasing it as a, as an investment property, unfortunately, one of the requirements to be eligible for that rebate is to own or occupy the property. So absolutely, this this would be something uh, to think of, uh, definitely, uh, in terms of that land transfer tax. There are some other expenses in terms of uh, rental properties. And again, from the mortgage perspective, um, for sure as well, um, the interest rates, all that, but that let's say that's from the from the mortgage agent's perspective. But I I feel that also the bank's requirements are a little bit more strict. There's additional documents, additional security that has to be provided uh, when you're obtaining mortgage financing, uh, such as assignment of rents general, um, sometimes um, personal property security as well, along with the assignment of rents. But that assignment of rents, uh, I mean, it does increase a little bit the legal fees, Um, you know, governmental fee, registration fee, um, that's something to think of. It's it's not an astonishing uh, amount, but still always something extra to, to think of. That's a very fair point. Very lastly, is there anything that typically people may not know but they really should know about either you or your business. People often are very surprised of the amount of paperwork Mm. us lawyers really have. Uh, You know, I think we're really reasonably priced uh, in proportion to the amount of work we really do have. I feel like people don't really see all the steps and there's like numerous steps like a hundred steps leading to the closing date you know clients don't realize how much is involved in a real estate transaction and it's numerous hours it's it's not like one day closing date no it's preparing the whole file ensuring uh title search you know conducting title search, meeting with the client. So it's, it's a lot of hours. And the day of closing is also pretty intense. Uh, you know, lots of banking, registration, then final reports, then also compliance with, with a certain things after the closing date. Uh, you know, we often, uh, acting for sellers, we pay out their mortgages. You know, there's a lot of chasing after afterwards, uh, running around, you know, whether, well, when you act for the 
for the seller, you 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 know sometimes have to contact the bank. Well, where is that discharge of charge? You know, I paid out, so that that is a little stressful because of course you pay out the mortgage and you want to have that confirmation in the form of that discharge, right? Uh, and then you have to submit that to the buyer's lawyer because you undertook personally undertook to pay that out and to fulfill that obligation to receive that discharge. So I feel like that's that re the real estate uh, transaction does not start and end on the closing date. There's a lot, a lot involved that people don't realize. Absolutely. Um, just a lot of thankless work, a lot of work that it doesn't get seen. So it doesn't get acknowledged. Uh, something to keep in mind that, you know, we really, really do have a lot of work. You know, there is something that I just wanted to iron out really quickly. I get a lot of questions from buyers about the process and what the next step entails and specifically about payments, money transfers and deposits. So what I'm, what I'm referring to is a lot of buyers will be like, okay, so I'm going to put in an offer. Typically within 24 hours, I'm going to give my initial deposit. When do I pay the rest? Do I pay it on closing? Do I have to pay it before close? Like what happens? What's the next step with money? Right. Can you touch upon that for a moment. Absolutely. And, and I don't blame anyone that there's a lot of confusion and, and just those question marks. What, what next? Because, what? because it, it is, it is a little bit confusing. So that's why I like to, whenever I receive an agreement of purchase and sale, I really, really like to inform the client from the very beginning, what's happening. So I always put together, as a matter of fact, every lawyer should really Mm -hmm. prepare something that's called an uh, engagement letter, initial letter, retainer letter, there's different, different names to label it. Um, and I, what I do, I'm very specific in that letter and I try to cover basically everything from start to finish. So that being said, I advise them that, you know, my legal fees are so-and-so, the disbursements are roughly this much because, of course, you can't really, really uh, give them an exact amount, but at least just an estimate. Land transfer tax, you were able to give them. Why not give them right away so they could, you know, keep that in mind and, and see the numbers there. They're out there. And I do advise them that, you know, a lump sum of everything to cover, basically, you know, I receive mortgage money, of course. Um, but that doesn't cover all the expenses because again, the big one is land transfer tax, right? The biggest one. Um, so I, I do tell them, you know, before the closing date, I will require a wire transfer or a bank draft or a certified check made payable to my firm in trust. Okay, so I do, do tell them a few days before the closing date. The day of the closing is a little too late, I would say. It's still doable, but it just delays the process. You know, I like to close my deals first thing in the morning. That's my ideal ideal style. Uh, and I, I love to do that because, of course, um, clients are anxious, right? You want to make sure you deliver the property to them, the keys. Um, everything is closed in a timely manner. They don't have to wait uh, so long all day. Because of course we have time till till end of business day, but why why not why not close it earlier? So I do advise them, you know, in order to avoid any delays, I will give you a breakdown of the amount of money I need from you a yeah. few days before the closing date. Why a few days before the closing date and not a month before the closing date is because. Often I don't receive the mortgage instructions giving me that breakdown as to what I'm really receiving in, in, in my trust account mm -hmm. until a few days just before the closing date. So as soon as I get it, I try to put everything together and, and submit it to the client. I give them a statement of account, a trust ledger statement showing all disbursements, all, all basically receipts and disbursements. So they could, uh, they could take a look, review it. Of course, we discuss it uh, in, in, big, in more detail during the appointment, but at least they have that breakdown. They could go to the bank, arrange for the funds, because some people do need extra time to you know, move funds around. Right. Whatever the case is, yes. So I do give them heads up. I'm go going to give it to you closer to the closing date and as soon as possible. You know, if I receive the mortgage um, documentation two weeks before the closing, 
I try to finalize everything, the financials on my end, and I will submit that to the client. But going back to that, that initial letter, I, I do state that right away. When the client retains my services, I, I put that in writing so they could, you know, understand the process. I also tell them, you know, we will meet before the closing date. I also advise clients that are roughly between three to five business days, um, we will meet and in order to sign all the documents. And by meeting, I mean either via video through Zoom, I submit everything to them by email, they sign electronically, of course, in my presence, and I review everything with them just as if I reviewed it in person. Uh, these days, because of the pandemic, I find that clients do not want to meet in person. Mm -hmm. And they also want to save the time to travel, you know, so that also expedites everything, makes it much easier for them. Excellent. So, so yes, yeah, so all, the process is being explained in that, in that letter and provided that they do read it, <laughs> then it's, it's all covered. It's really all covered. I explain different matters, how they're going to take title. What are the options to take title, legal fees, disbursements, title insurance. Um, it's not mandatory. Mm -hmm. Title insurance is not mandatory. So, you know, I give them, I, I give them that piece of advice um, so they could understand. I do advise them about insurance that sometime before the closing date, they do need to obtain their insurance for the home. Um, I tell them what relevant information must be stated there. So then there's no surprises in last minute. Oh, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you advise me? It's stressful as it is. You're buying or selling it's 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 huge it's very significant yes yes that that letter i feel like it really helps clients to navigate through the process because often especially when you're a first time home buyer you, you really don't know you really are lost it's all complicated it's a lot of steps involved you want to be well informed by the lawyer right and and i don't like surprises either and i don't want to surprise my clients you know last minute with last minute things of course sometimes once in a blue moon there are some un unpredictable uh, issues that arise and or difficulties in the transaction but nonetheless I try to cover everything as much as possible there in that in that letter so they could take a look and then followed by a phone call. If they need to clarify some more than happy to always talk to the client and explain because I understand things may be a little bit complicated and they don't understand. No problem. We could talk, talk it over and no, no issues there. Absolutely. Well, Savenia, that is exactly why you are my real estate lawyer, um, you. because you are so informative. You're so on top of it and your structure, the way that you structure your business and deal with our clients is incredible. So thank you. Happy to help commercial or commercial real estate. Absolutely. So if you guys are looking for a real estate lawyer, please reach out, but always like comment and share. Thank you so much. Thank you.